There is a city lost in time, protected by the misty mountains which surround it, where centuries-old traditions are respected and still practiced daily. This place of favorable omens, watched over by spirits and embraced by the Mekong, sits under a holy mountain and has been settled by men for many ages. It is a special place where a mighty ruler, King Fanum, fulfilled the prophecy of two hermits that a great city would arise there. He brought the Pavang Buddha to this city he built. The Lao PDR is located in the heart of Southeast Asia. It's a landlocked regional transit center covering 236,800 square kilometers, which is approximately the same size as the United Kingdom. It has a population of around 6.5 million people. Laos shares borders with five countries, China, Myanmar, Vietnam, Thailand, and Cambodia. Vientiane is the capital city of Laos. The province of Luang Prabang lies 400 kilometers north of Vientiane and borders six other provinces. It also shares an international border with Vietnam. The province is made up of 12 districts and has a population of approximately 630,000 people from a mixture of different ethnic groups. Most people live in the rural areas and are farmers, and a small percentage are merchants and traders. The capital city of the Luang Prabang province bears the same name. Luang Prabang is home to the Prabang Buddha image and is located alongside the Mekong River, on the confluence with the Kan River. The main heritage area is known as the Peninsula. The city received UNESCO World Heritage status in 1995. <laughs> เจ้าองค์การจะตั้งสากลทางตังโดยเฉพาะเงินองค์การของอาร์เดฟหรือทางสร้างทูตสหรัฐอเมริกาเป็นต้นแม่นวัดเชียงทองเอ่อถือว่
cultural preservation which operates worldwide and has preserved uh, over 600 projects of various kinds, buildings and manuscripts um, in over 100 countries around the world. Here in Laos, the Ambassadors Fund has had 17 projects over the last 14 years which have preserved important parts of the very valuable Lao culture, including temples and Buddhist archives. ไปดูไปทางสันทบเลยเลือกไปบึงแต่ละบทละบทแล้วก็ได้นับใบมันตึงอีกเนาะเอ่อแต่ละบทมันมีจังไว้ 70 ก็ปีเนาะมันก็ยักลึกลางอ่าหนังสือเหล่านี้แต่ว่ามหาบุรุษเหล่าบอกสมาชิกลึกลางได้อ่าเพราะว่าตรงนี้เป็นหลักฐ
ำนังหนึ่งในเจ็ดโค้งลูกซ่อพญากบิลผมซึ่งเป็นตำนานหนึ่งที่สำคัญของเมืองลุ่งพบางหนังสังฆานเมนได้ทึกคัดเลือกเจ้าการประกวดประจำปีที่มีซ่องงามเจ้าบานไกลเขียงหงเหียนและสถาบันต่างๆในเมืองลุ่งพบางหลังจากที่คัดเลือกหนังทั้งเจ็ดที่เป็นตัวแทนให้แกลูกเศร้าของพญากบิลผมแล้วก็จะได้หับหน้าทีนําเอาหัวของพญากบิลผมผู้เป็นพอเป็นหดส่งและหับไซเวียกงานของเมืองลุ่งพบางเป็นเวลาหนึ่งปีเต็มหนังสังฆานทั้งเจ็ดจะต้องได้ไปกราบไหว้หัวของพญากบิลผมในทุกๆปีเพื่อให้มีความสุขความเจริญและเป็นสิริมงคลแก่สาวลุ่งพบางเฟสติวัลส์มอสวิสิบิลแอคทิวิตี้คอนซิสต์ออฟพอร์ริงวอเตอร์โอเวอร์พีเพิลฮูมเดอะพอร์ราวิชิสต์เบลส์ทวอเตอร์พอร์ริงซิกเนฟายส์กูดวิลคัมเพชันเวลวิชิสอันเรเวอเรนซ์ทั้งเฟสต์เดย์ของเซเลบรชันคือคือซังคันวันคือทั้งเฟสต์เดย์ของการจัดงานและเรียกว่าคลีนิ่งเดย์เป็นสิ่งที่เรียกว่าการพิจารณาในการประกอบการในปีใหม่ทั้งเฟสต์เดย์ของเซเลบรชันคือคือซังคันวันคือทั้งเฟสต์เดย์ของการจัดงานและเรียกว่าคลีนิ่งเดย์เป็นสิ่งที่เรียกว่าการพิจารณา One day of rest while work is forbidden. One should avoid extensive travel, as the Kuan, the vital souls, are particularly vulnerable during this day to wander and/or be captured by evil spirits. The third day of celebration is called Sankan Kun Pi Mai, the first day of the new year. It's a time to rejoice, a day to visit relatives and friends. And pay respect to elders by engaging in the auspicious act of sprinkling water on their hands and feet to ask for blessings. Basi Sukuan ceremonies for well wishes and to call back any lost or wandering souls are held during this day as well. One of the more popular acts is to buy birds in small bamboo cages and to free them. Freeing the bird is to protect oneself against problems and send away bad things from the old year. People cross the Mekong River and build sand stupas on the embankments of the sandy beaches. According to the local legend, a naga brought sand from the Mekong to create an island of sand for Buddha, who came to visit this place. Banners with images of the zodiac are planted on these stupas to show respect to the river, but also to apologize for harm that might have been caused. At night, people visit local temples to light candles and pour water over the Pabang Buddha statue at Wat Mai and make wishes for the new year. The role of Nang Sang Khan presents itself during the New Year festivities through the reenactment of the myth of how the divine king Kapin Lapom lost his life due to losing a bet with Tamaban, the great sage, and was decapitated. However, he warned that if his head touched the earth, a catastrophic fire would swallow the world. If it touched the sea, the ocean would dry up, and if it touched the sky, rainfall would cease to exist. Kabin Lapom instructed his seven daughters to place his decapitated head in a cave on the foot of Mount Sumeru, a place neither of this world nor that of the gods. To pay homage to their father and to prevent the occurrence of natural disasters, every year one of the seven daughters attends to the decapitated head by cleansing it and leading a procession around the base of Mount Sumeru to show their reverence to Kabin Lapom. The myth of the Nan San Kan embodied the values associated with the New Year festival mentioned earlier. The selfless act of paying homage to Kabinlapom is an example of spiritual duty by his daughters, 
and is also an act of compassion. In preventing the catastrophic world destruction by Kabinlapom's severed head, the Nansan can serve as protectors of the world, an ultimate act of merit-making. This myth has been reenacted throughout centuries as part of the New Year festivities, of which a replica of Kabinlapom's severed head is paraded around centers or structures that represent Mount Sumeru, like temples, villages and sand stupas. The historical reasoning for instituting the Nansankan myth with the Lao New Year festivities is quite practical. In an era where the majority of people were illiterate, the presence of the Nansankan provided the population a glimpse of time and space. Each of Kabinlapom's daughters is associated with the days of the week. The specific day and time of the arrival of the Sankan Kumpi Mai, as determined by the passing of the sun into the constellation Aries, determines which of Kabinlapom's daughters will lead the procession and whether she will stand, sit or lie down on her chariot. Each year, a boat racing festival, Boon Suang Hua, is held to venerate the Naga that protects the city. Villages come together with their teams to compete on the Kan River. In Luang Prabang, the festival is held on Hawk Halpadabdin, the day of commemoration for the dead in August. During the race, the riverside is taken over by stalls selling all kinds of goods and foods or games. Loud music is played all day until the evening. Big crowds gather along the banks of the Khan River to watch and cheer on the boats. Traditional racing boats are carved using one single tree. The boats belong to a village and are usually kept in a shelter on the temple grounds and come out only once a year for the race. Several days before the race, the boats are cleaned and presented with offerings because the boats are considered sacred items. These boats can hold approximately 50 paddlers. The starting point is upstream and the competition is between two boats at a time. The loser is eliminated. The winners receive a trophy, a silver cup and cash. While the boat racing has become a focus of entertainment, athletics and commerce, the boat festival is really a homage to water divinities and the Nagas, who are protectors of the city. Later in the year comes Ork Pansa, the three-month-long Buddhist Lent. Boon Kao Pansa marks the beginning of Buddhist Lent, which lasts from late July until the end of October. It's a three-month rains retreat. They're not allowed to travel anywhere or revert to being laymen. During this time, devout people often abstain from drinking alcohol and meditate. It encourages them to follow the five major Buddhist precepts. Many take time away from work to make merit and to honor their ancestors. They also offer robes to the monks. These are the most usual months for ordination and for men to enter the monkhood for short periods before they marry and are marked by numerous ordination ceremonies. Ah! 
One day after the full moon at the end of Okpansa, the town is lit up for the festival of lights, Lai Hua Fai, with boats adorned with candles and lights placed on the water as wishes for good luck. The festival is likely to have originated as a ceremony paying homage to the rivers and water divinities. At its core is the construction of these small boats of light made by individuals and families from banana tree trunks, leaves, flowers, candles and incense. Village communities join in and create the most extraordinary and ornate boats of fire. ศาสนาพุทธเป็นหลวงพระบางของพวกเขาเนี่ยตั้งแต่สมัยพระเจ้าฟางอุ่มเป็นแล้วเนาะเป็นแนะนําออกมาจากประเทศเขมรสมัย
อันนี้จะมีมาตามพระวินัยพันบัญญัติเนาะคือผู้ที่เข้าบวชแล้วนี่ต้องแทบพ่มก็เพราะว่าการแทบพ่มนี่แกเพื่อเห็นว่ามันต่างจากสาวบ้านต่างจากสาวบ้านก็คือสาวบ้านเพราะสมัยก่อนแต่สมัยพระพุทธเจ้าของเฮานั้นเพื่อเห็นเฮานี่ต่างจากสาวบ้านคือต้องแทบพ่มว่าผู้ใดแทบพ่มแล้วเขาเขาว่าเป็นคนที่กะละคินีไม่ยังขนาดเนาะอยู่ประเทศกระเจ้าในช่วงที่นุ่งพระข้าวก่อนจะบวชนะพันเอิดเสียงนะความจริงแล้วบ่มีกันไดพระข้าวนะในเมื่อก่อนส่วนล่างนี่แกนุ่งส้งนุ่งเสื้อแหละมาธรรมดาจะบวชเดี๋ยวนี้มันอุดมสมบูรณ์แล้ววันนี้เจ้ากระเห็ดค่อยกระเห็ดแล้วก็เลยเป็นแบบเป็นแพ่นกันมาแบบนั้นเมื่อเข้ามาบวชแล้วก็ทายเป็นพระเรื่องอันการคาบนี้เป็นการแสดงความเคารพอย่างหนึ่งต่อพระพุทธองค์หรือพระรัตนตรัยนี่พระพุทธประธรรมพระสงฆ์การคาบครั้งที่หนึ่งเป็นให้เฮาระนึกถึงพระพุทธเจ้าคาบครั้งที่สองก็ระนึกถึงพระธรรมพระเจ้าพระธรรมไม่ถึงคำสั่งสอนของพระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยคาบครั้งที่สามก็ระนึกถึงพระสงฆ์พระอริยสังฆเจ้าตนตลอดอดพระสังฆสมุทรเซนพวงเหาผีว่าความห้าผิดชอบข้องอันสัตว์นี้มันก็มันก็มีห้าเวียกใหญ่นั่นแหะมีเวียกปกครองอันที่ซ่องมานี่แกเวียกงานเพื่อแพร่สิ้นธรรมอันที่สร้างมาเป็นการศึกษาอันที่สี่มาเป็นเวียกชาติารนูปาการแล้วกาอยู่แค่งเหานี้มันมีพิเศษอันที่ห้านี้ก็คือเวียกเอามาตั้งสุนข้อมูลภูภาพแล้วก็ข้อมูลเกี่ยวกับพุทธศาสนาไว้วัดคีรีหันนะ As demonstrated by the many celebrations and traditions Buddhism is the dominant spiritual belief in Laos, though some Lao practice animism. Lao Buddhists belong to the Theravada tradition, which is based on the earliest teachings of the Buddha and focuses on the Four Noble Truths. Today, Luang Prabang has 34 temples, though it is estimated that there were as many as 65 in the 18th century. Many of these temples display stenciled artwork that evokes the Buddhist faith. Built by King s a t a t h a r a t in 1560, one of the oldest and most important of these temples is Wat Siang Tong. Recently restored, it displays beautiful mosaics depicting Lao folk tales and Buddhist stories. One chapel, the funerary carriage house, contains a vast wooden funeral chariot. Carrying the urns with the ashes of members of the former royal family. Wat Siang Tong in the royal capital of Luang Prabang in Laos is one of the most important temples in the country. It was the temple where the Lao kings came to be crowned, and was the site of many important festivals in Luang Prabang over the years. The Ambassadors Fund has invested over $700,000 over the years in the restoration of b a t s i e n g t o n g and has preserved not only the central temple but also a number of very important outbuildings, chapels, and a coach house. So b a t s i e n g t o n g now that has been restored, has really become, I think, the central tourist attraction of all of Luang Prabang. 
from and from all over the United States. Good to meet you. Shall we take a time for you? Yes, yes, yes. How long will it be? Can you see the big window? And I had the opportunity to participate in the handover ceremony of the last phase of the restoration which took place in the late afternoon and we were seated at a table uh, across from the coach house which had been restored with a coating of gold leaf and as we sat there the the sun moved so that the reflection came off the gold leaf and toward us at the table and it was almost as if you were facing the sun looking at this coach house and you could imagine how it was in the glory days of, of the, the kingdom. Wat Wisunarat is Luang Prabang's oldest temple dating back to 1513. The temple has a colorful history. Originally it was crafted from wood before being burned down by a military rebel group led by a Chinese commander at the end of the 1880s. A stupa that was created in 1503 survived, along with some other small Buddha icons, although many were stolen during the raid. The temple was resurrected using stucco and brick, and houses a collection of religious artifacts and precious items relating to Buddhism and the royal family. It's an example of early Lao architecture, with wooden windows similar to Wat Pu in the south of the country, coupled with stucco work that is classic Luang Prabang. Restoration work was carried out in 1895 and then again in 1932. In 2010, historic and sacred artifacts dating from the 16th century were restored and conserved. The Chinese invaders left with most of the priceless Buddha images made from jade, gold and precious gems by breaking open the stupa. Before the invasion, Wat Wisunarat was once home to the revered Pabang Buddha. One of the temple's most unique features is its unusually shaped stupa, designed by the wife of King Wisunarat in the shape of a lotus flower, but referred to by locals as the watermelon stupa. Wat Sensukaram, the temple of a hundred thousand treasures, was constructed in 1718. The exterior is covered in a deep ochre color with gold stencils. Constructed with a hundred thousand stones from the Mekong River, the temple is made up of a prayer hall, a stupa, monks' quarters, a boat shelter and a drum house. Wat Sen was the first monastery in town whose prayer hall was covered with yellow and red tiles in the modern Thai fashion. Built during the late 18th century, Wat Mai, New Monastery, is one of the biggest and most beautiful temples in Luang Prabang. Its central position makes it one of the most visited temples of this ancient royal city. The temple was built by King Anurut at the end of the 18th century and was enlarged in the 19th century. After the Chinese destroyed the city in the last half of the 19th century, it served as a temple for the royal family and also sheltered the Pabang Buddha image for a long time. It was also the residence of the highest Lao Buddhist dignitary, Prasankarat. During the Lao New Year, the Pabang Buddha image is put on display in this temple for three days and devout Laotians from all over the country come to sprinkle the statue with water whilst making a wish. These are just a few examples of the many temples in and around Luang Prabang that show clearly why, in 1995, the town was inscribed on the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Tang Te Luang Prabang, they have been multiple groups. Tang Nap Te, Bi Phan Kroi, Kau Sipha, Mani, no, ระหว่างห้องการ multiple groups, ของเรากับคณะองค์การยูเนสโกเพื่อพวกเราจะเห็นเบียดยังกลุ่มเกี่ยวกันตลอดมาระยะสาสาวปีมานิที่พวกเขาปกปักสร้างหมดระดกโลกลงมาบางพวกเขาพวกเขาก็ถือว่าได้เอาจากสร้างเป็นพิเศษเนาะเกี่ยวกับอันหนึ่งละเมนบรรทัดการอนุรักษ์เหือนอยู่ในบัญชีนี้เป็นพวกเขาพยายามให้การสนับสนุนการเอื้อมบุรณะเพื่อให้มันมีความ
เพราะมันมีคงคุณค่าเสียเพราะมันมีการสำรุดสุดสมเกินไปกว่านั้นแต่หูบะหูแบบการอันบุรณะมันพวกเราเฮาเซอร์แบบเก่าเหตุหูเก่าเนาะหากบอมาเยี่ยมยำหมอระดกลื้อวาทานได้ได้มาประเทศลาวบอได้มาเยี่ยมยำมึงว่ามันกระทือว่าบุเห็นประเทศลาวเพราะว่าอันนี้เป็นสู้นกลางวัฒนธรรมทั้งสิ้นละปะทั้งวัฒนธรรมคงลันสร้างมันอยู่นี่หมดเนาะทางดอกดวงต่างๆวิธีชีวิตต่างๆพวกเขายัางบ่มีการเปลี่ยนแปลงนับทางบุญประเพณีนับแต่ละเดือนสิบช่องเดือนนี้พวกพวกเขาก็ยังได้ดำเนินเหตุ There are many buildings of interest in the city. The former royal palace, built in 1904 and now the National Museum, displays fascinating historical Lao artifacts. The fusion of Lao traditional and colonial architecture shows distinct styles that work together to give Luang Prabang its unique character through this architectural blend. Since becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site, guidelines were implemented to preserve the city's architecture. The buildings in the city can be divided into seven styles, ranging from the original wooden houses to half-timbered houses. Brick and wooden houses, to Lao colonial and administrative buildings and shop houses. No visit to Luang Prabang would be complete without climbing to the summit of Mount Pusi, where locals and visitors alike enjoy panoramic views of the city and its surrounding countryside. Luang Prabang's immediate environment boasts a vast natural biodiversity surrounded by mountains. In the past, the mountains and two rivers afforded a natural protection to the city. Now they add to the area's charm. Luang Prabang, Susan t i h a k i a m e i j a o Jong s a n g a p a p e i j u n y u t a p u m i s a i n a p v a n p a n p a i y i n g t e b n a i h a n g m i k e m k e n g p a n p a p a y u l o m d e n b e n g s i s e n g d a n g j a n v a n t e For centuries, villagers have used the river embankments to plant vegetables during the dry season. The fertile soil is perfect for growing vegetables, and villagers tend to their gardens on a daily basis. Every year, we plant vegetables. We start with seeds. Seeds come up, and then we plant seeds. We plant seeds, 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 and then we plant seeds. มาค่ายตลาดแดดเราแปลว่าเขาเห็ดซื้อกินเนาะเห็ดซื้ออยู่ซื้อกินแต่ละปีก็เห็ดแต่หัวแต่ส่วนนี่กินแปลว่าเห็ดเราเอาไปค่ายไปค่ายก็ซื้อครบซื้อกินมาซื้อครบซื้อครัวเขากินท้องถิ่นที่เป็นชื่อเสียงของประเทศไทยคือการ The floral motif is the most popular, along with the animals of the zodiac. One of the town's most prolific silversmiths was Uncle Peng, who produced silver articles for the royal family. He sadly passed away in 2013, but during his lifetime, he was committed to passing on his craft to younger generations.
Prabang Prabang also has a long history of music and dance. Mr. Saipet Kampasit teaches the traditional dances of the Pralat Pralam to students at the National Theatre. The dances were historically performed for the royal family. The dances are very popular with visitors and are sometimes performed in public places like hotels and restaurants and during special festivals. ในเมื่อก่อนสื่อน้อยนั้นแม่นใส่เนี่ยเป็นสุขภพเวลาบทันมาพระพิศพเนี่ยหลังจากนั้นมาแล้วก็ได้แสดงละครพระลักษณ์
um, and working with international organizations that can help um, both revive and um, stimulate cultural activities here in Laos, but gain recognition for it outside of the country. So we worked with an American organization called Photo Forward, which worked with uh, young ethnic minority women to teach them how to use cameras and video cameras and interviews to document their own cultural heritage. These videos then went up on YouTube and a number of people have been able to watch them subtitled in English and learn more about the cultural heritage of the country. We have had a number of exhibitions here at TAC supported by different international organizations that have have been written up in international magazines and newspapers and hopefully um, showing the world that Laos has a lot to offer in terms of culture. Viving is an important part of the culture, especially in Luang Prabang, and many ethnic groups in Laos use different techniques of weaving. For example, in the South or in the Austro-Asiatic group, they mostly they use backstab room. So mostly they will use frame room or floor room, especially in the north of Laos. Like for example, like mostly in Luang Prabang or in the Thai group, you will see more about the Naga motif. Because usually Naga is very strong and it's to protect whoever that's inside the house. Today, it's very different from long times ago, especially about the motif. Why? Because right now for the young people, they don't have much time to spend on their loom or to their artwork compared to grandmother or for their mother. So mostly the complicated motif is done by the older people. And then for the young people, they all do only the simple motif. But if the old generation pass away, and then if the young people not continue to practice, of course, that motif might pass away as well. So however, we need to support the young people for them to start to do simple, simple motif. And then after that, they keep practice, practice, and then they keep weaving more and more. Of course, they will get to the point, to the complicated motif. There are many markets where people buy their daily food. Famous foods from Luang Prabang are the riverweed, chili paste, and the celebrated Luang Prabang sausage. These markets have been around for hundreds of years, and the early morning food market is the place to go shopping for the locals. In recent years, it has also become a place to learn about local culture for visitors. The night market is still a place to hunt for good bargains. Local woven scarves and other handicrafts are very popular with tourists, while the fascinating array of products on offer also includes some very exotic drinks that give special strength. Following the Mekong River, the Pak U Caves are a marvel of Buddhist history. The caves are 25 kilometers upstream of the main city, on the confluence of the U and Mekong Rivers. In these caverns, thousands of Buddha statues of different shapes and sizes can be found. They were placed there by devout Buddhists over many centuries. Other places of interest nearby are waterfalls and elephant camps.
Since Luang Prabang was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1995, tourism has grown rapidly. Tourists visit here for both cultural and ecotourism, with ecotourism well suited to expand in Luang Prabang and for the country as a whole. The city has won many awards for its outstanding quality as a tourist destination over the past decade. อ่าแสดงจริงว่านับแต่ปีสองพันหกจนถึงปีสองพันสิบห้านี่โรงพยาบาลของเขาอ่าได้องค์การหรือว่าวารสารวรรณเลสขององค์กิจยั่งยืน